Hey, I'm here with Alex from the Seabends in Australia. How are you, Alex? I'm really well, Ryan. How, how about yourself? Uh, very good, very good. Uh, I'm excited to uh, to have you on. I, I've been waiting a long time to talk to you. Uh, we, we've both been kind of juggling our schedules to make this work. Um, it's always a pleasure to have somebody like on the other side of the planet to talk to. It's it's good for, you know, makes me feel good um, to have you on the show. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Well, thanks for inviting me on. I really appreciate it. You know, we've been checking out your channel and uh, there's some great, great interviews. And so, yeah, it's a real pleasure and an honor. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, so you described on your bank page, uh, where there's going to be a link in the description where people can go check you guys out. Mm -hmm. um, you describe yourselves as like a psychedelic instrumental surf, surf rock. Uh, I was looking at some of the tags in there. Uh, in your own words, uh, other than that, like kind of give like a description of your band for somebody who hasn't heard you. Yeah, sure. Well, you know, we, we kind of settled on the psychedelic surf rock because of the initial influences where we started writing. But um, we all have a pretty diverse background in playing in lots of styles of bands and stuff like that. So it's definitely filtered into what we do, you know. Um, I loved, you know, listening to Jimi Hendrix growing up and, um, you know, but from jazz to funk music to, you know, we've got a quite a broad range of influences. However, you know, the, the power trio and the surf element of like reverbed guitar and, um, you know, some tremolo and all of that kind of has seeped in there and feels like a, a pretty good starting point for us. Yeah, very, very cool. Uh, instrumental music, like like many people see, is kind of universal. Um, you can play your music for somebody in Argentina and vice versa. And it's just music, you know, do you think that that's why it speaks to you so much? Oh, absolutely, man. You know, um, you know, it's funny you say that because as a young fella, I did travel a lot backpacking around the world and I went to some countries where there was that language barrier, but I would sit down and play music with people. And it was always a connecting point of bringing people together. So yeah, I really connect with that kind of philosophy of um, music is the universal language. Awesome. Like now, when you were traveling, did you find um, like commonalities or, or things that surprised you in your travels? Like, oh, we, you know, you like those guys too, or you like that style of music too, and like something completely unexpected? Um. Yeah, oh geez, you're testing my memory now because it's a while back. But you know, obviously when I was in like the States and, and Canada, there was always that mutual understanding of like eras of music. Like I grew up in the 90s and listening to all those grunge bands and all those metal bands. And I, uh, I, I'm also, uh, my father's a great musician and he raised me on blues and the Beatles and all of this. So there was definitely that when I was in those Western countries. But when I was in like Mexico or Cuba, um, even Greece or South um, South Africa, there was definitely, uh, you know, a little bit of um, a barrier between our tastes, but there was something always there with melody and rhythm and something that drew us in, you know, and brought us together. So, yeah, so that awesome. answers the question. <laughs> yeah, 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 and like Australia has like a very rich and diverse um music culture as well yeah i mean you, you have everything from martin cilia to um acdc yeah man yeah. who are e equally equally as uh um uh, talented um in in your your best in the best of your knowledge like what was more influential that kind of martin cilia or the atlantics instrumental music or more rock like ACDC in your in your country? Uh, I would say probably ACDC for sure. I mean, from that era on when they started, right? Yeah. Um, through the 80s, like 80s kind of hard rock is pretty ingrained in the Australian aesthetic, you know? Yeah. 
it was an era like you had bands like Midnight Oil, which are international. I don't know yeah. if you know those guys, oh, yeah. but you know, but they were they were influenced by a lot of that early surf rock music, you know. Um, yeah, yeah. Wayne Eddy and the Shadows and all of these types of bands definitely came into play with influencing those bands. Um, but you know, like the thing about ACDC, it's just kind of such visceral rock, you know, it's just like yeah. in your face. And I think everyone around the world can relate to that energy that, that ACDC project. So yeah, a bit of both, man, you know, yeah. um, I know that, you know, Angus from, from ACDC did something to me when I was young, like just that influence of that hard rock, you know, and his energy on stage and his solos, like I still feel it every time I hear that music. That vibrato. Oh yeah, man. It takes me back, you know, it yeah. really takes me back to being a kid and just being wowed by it, you know? Yeah. That was the, it was uh let there be rock was the first hard rock album I ever heard. Oh man. Yeah. It was what a record fun. that is, huh? Yeah. Right. That's, that's a hard one to top. Yeah, yeah, man. Those early days with Bon Scott at the front, just taking it, you know. Um, it's just so much energy in it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Tell me a little bit about that guitar you have sitting behind you. Oh, this, yeah, is a Les Paul Jr. It's oh. a, bit of a, it's a rock weapon, right? Oh, my but, um, God. Yeah, these are quite, quite uh, versatile, these guitars. You know, people kind of rag them off as just being like a one pickup kind of you know, um, one trick pony, but you know, if you use that volume knob, you can actually get a lot of different tones out of it. It almost has like an acoustic quality. Um, when you've got it dialed in at about five on, on the volume, right? How long yeah. did it take you to experiment with that to get the different tones? Yeah. Yeah. You can get a lot out of these little guitars. It's funny. I think when they brought them out in the fifties, they were pitched as a, um, a, as a, a student guitar like for kids right uh-huh and then and then a few people you know like kind of got their hands on it you know like kind of rock warriors and and they were like nah this thing this thing kicks ass you know it rocks hard yeah what do you, what do you play like to play it through um so currently the amps i have at the moment i've got a, a fender deluxe um and i've got a, a blues junior and when uh, the C-Bands do live shows, I actually run the two amps in stereo. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, so I'll have the Deluxe, you know, because it's got a fair bit of headroom on it. Uh, it's a, Sorry, it's a Hot Rod Deluxe. So it's a 40-watt amp, and it's got a fair bit of headroom on it. So it stays pretty clean. And then the Junior, I'll dial in, like, kind of just, you know, it's, it's breaking up a bit. And then I mix the two tones together to get a big sound for the trio, you know? Yeah. Something I, I haven't heard a lot of, but I think now that you mentioned it is a perfect mix is the the Fender amp, which of course is my favorite. Um mm. and, and the Les Paul. I, I you don't I haven't seen that combination and as much as I geek out and try to see what everybody's playing, yeah. To my ear just thinking about it, that makes a perfect combination. Why did you put those two together? Ah, that's a good question. Well, this particular guitar, the Junior, um, it's a fairly new guitar and what you hear on the C-Bands records is actually a, a Telecaster and an SG. Yeah. So you do have that Gibson component, the SG. I, I love the SG just because of, I mean, you know, the size of the sound you get out of the humbuckers, right? Yeah. And, um, and yeah, it's that that's the psychedelic, the rock sound that kind of comes through in the C band sound, I think. You know, that I can dig in and get get a fair bit of sustain and, and warm crunch out of that guitar. Whereas like for the more gnarly like tremolo picking kind of style things, I use a, a telecaster, right? Yeah. What what pickup do you have in the telecaster bridge? Uh, so I actually swapped them out because uh, uh, the Telecaster I have is a, um, a Japanese 62 reissue and I, I swapped out the stock pickups for um, Lindy Fralin Blues Specials. Okay. And that's a really nice pickup. It still has, it, it still has that kind of bark, but it doesn't kind of, it doesn't kind of have that crystally like 
poke you in the eye kind of sound that you can get out of a Telecaster, which I, I don't mind occasionally, but you know, um, I use that guitar in, in a, in a fair few different projects that I have too, you know, so it's yeah. kind of the best of both worlds. Totally. Totally. I, yeah. I get it. And, um, my uncle who lent me the, the Gibbs, the SG back here. Yeah. It's a 71. Uh, oh, nice. But this is my Strat, and you can't see it. But in the Strat, I have a um, a little 59 Seymour yeah. Duncan. Oh, yeah. And he's like, why do you play those Fenders? I said, well, I like the way the Gibson sounds, but I like the way the, the Fender feels. Yeah, man. But I, I, as beautiful as it is, I can't seem to get my hand around that right. <laughs> Ah, oh, the, 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 the SG, yeah, right, yeah, they have a, a bit bigger neck, right? There's a bit more girth in that. In the, in the, yeah, my, my, neck. I have small hands. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, interesting, man. Well, you know, I played a lot of acoustic too when I, young, when I was young, and when I uh, did all that backpacking, I, I just had an acoustic with me, right? Yeah, so yeah. I kind of got used to the, the thicker neck. And I do like the thicker neck on, on this junior, right? Like it's a little bit more acoustic kind of vibes um i do like kind of the flatter you know um next that you you might get on a like a modern strat or something like that um but there's something that i like hugging onto like acoustic style kind of neck yeah cool it, it is uh um it's good to train on that you know yeah from a young age but also to keep your hands strong as you you know get older and, and you want to push yourself to play different styles it's always good to go back and try to strengthen your grip right yeah true man yeah i think uh that those early days of playing a lot of acoustic um it, it, it did that exactly it strengthened my hands and now i actually use heavy heavier strings on my electric i use 11 to 49s um i just like you know because i i think i dug in so hard on the acoustic when i get on a an electric mm -hmm. with like you know, a set of nines on it. They're like rubber bands and I'm bending all over the shop, you know, over bent. So I, I like something that's just got a bit of give, you know? Yeah. Yeah. What is, um, as far as, uh, I'm sorry if I'm getting too nerdy on you here. But, no, it's cool, man. It's cool. But for somebody who plays nines like me, mm. if I were to go play 11s, yeah. it would be very difficult for me. Mm -hmm. But why do you, I mean, it is more difficult to play 11s, but why Why do you play 11s as opposed to 9s? Like, what is the reason, like, tone-wise? Yeah, it's a good question. I think uh, it's definitely that, um, you know, the, 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 the uh, resistance of the string. You know, I'm used to the acoustic kind of heavier string, and that's something that works for me. You know, when I, when I bend a tone, I kind of know where it's going to go with the, the heavier string. Whereas with the lighter strings, I mean, it's just uh, my strength, I suppose I'll overbend and I'll, I'll, my right hand will kind of dig in too hard. Whereas I'm used to the resistance that, of the 11s. Um, and yeah, it is a tone thing I feel, but then, you know, that's kind of been debunked by a few people that, you know, that there's more tone in the thicker string. Um, but it just seems to work for me, man. I, I just like the thicker string because I can dig in hard. I've got a pretty heavy right hand okay. and and a pretty heavy left hand too. So I think it's for that reason. All right. That's cool. Um, yeah. Is there anything you wanted uh, before we go, uh, anything you wanted to mention, talk about, ask me, or say to our viewers? Sure. Yeah. Well, I suppose I'd just like to, to let your viewers know that, you know, our, we have a current single out, which is called Nova Sun. Um, and we're really proud of that one. There's a film clip with that, uh, which we've done, which is kind of cool. Uh, it's got a bit of a 90s vibe, so like flashing lights and some different angles. And we actually um, filmed that one in my brother-in-law's uh, place. He made this amazing uh, set design. He actually built these amazing tables. Anyway, he had this awesome set design and we set up in it and it, it came across really cool. So they can check out Nova Sun. And we're also uh, going to release an EP 
in about three to four weeks now on the, the 20th of June. So we're going to release a, a four song EP that will be out across all streaming platforms and people can check that out. Um, they can also look at our website, uh, www.thecbenz.com, if they're curious to know any more information about us. And yeah, we're just going to, you know, keep chipping away at it. We're, we're really invested in it. Grant's got a great little home studio that we've been recording out of. So we feel really lucky to, um, you know, uh, make our records at his place while, while we can. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. Yeah. Is there anything else that you're curious about or? Well, what, what I just wanted to say to you and to the viewers that is you should really check them out. Go to www.cvents.com or the Bandcamp link in the description to sample the music directly. Yeah, man. And support the band. But it really is, um, you know, when I used to go go out, this is the kind of music that I would hear in the club. And okay. it, it took me back to my 20s, you know, 30 years ago. <laughs> um, and and I really uh, enjoyed it. And, you know, the psychedelic, just, you know, rock rock and roll instrumental. And uh, and and it has that, it, it really has a surf vibe to it, like, like a surf town, like a beach, you know, a beach town. Yeah. And uh, I just wanted to say I really enjoyed getting to know your music o- over the last couple of months. Oh, thanks, man. Well, again, we really appreciate you having me on and, and supporting the band. And we're just stoked that uh, it's reaching beyond, you know, where we live and, and it's, you know, getting to people's ears across the ocean. So we're just wrapped and appreciate your time, man. Thanks so much, man. You have a great rest of your day. It's the start of your day over there. <laughs> it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Cool. Likewise, Ryan. And uh, yeah, man, hopefully we get to talk again soon.